Thank you very much, Simon. It is a, a great to be here. The CEO should uh, know about AI. You are perfectly right that you should not know anything about the technical details. But there are a lot of things that I think are very useful for a CEO to know. And this is very much along those uh, those additional challenges that you said that appear in the in the world of education, where we talk about knowledge and learning in terms of human and AI. And this is what I would like to talk a little bit about today. This is obviously based on my book, which can, by the way, uh, be downloaded for free until uh, Friday this week from the publisher. And and what I want to tell you a little bit about first is why I can I think I am the right person to talk about this, and then a little bit about knowledge and learning in terms of AI and human. So, the uh, I have twenty five years experience in the field, and this is a dual sort of experience. So, as a practitioner, I was building AI systems for twenty five years. I was uh, leading software development, running implementations, and mainly supporting uh, C level executives with uh, AI. On the other side, as a scholar, I was studying how people know and learn and such. And therefore, I conducted, for example, interviews with 20 top scientists in the world, 17 of them who had a Nobel Prize. And based on this, I kind of uh, developed an idea about, uh, about what it is that, that CEOs should know about uh, AI. The prompt for that was when I attended the the a New Scientist Live event in 2017. And that event, uh, Demis Hassab is the founder and CEO of, of DeepMind and now the AI chief of Google, uh, talked about DeepMind and about AlphaGo. And he made assertions such as uh, DeepMind learns the same way as people do and that AlphaGo demonstrated creativity and intuition. So I wanted to clarify where these differences are. To do that, the first thing is to go back to what is AI, so how AI was defined. And the definition of AI was uh, loosely that it is a machine that can deliver a performance that humans would deliver through thinking. And this definition does not say anything about whether it, it is delivered through thinking or by any other means. And then the first thing that I think is useful, let's think about our thinking and compare it to how it works uh, in the machine. So how our knowledge is different from the knowledge representation or whatever form of, of uh, processes that are, that are done in computerized systems. So <laughs> what is very important is that if we build some sort of knowledge representation, some types of AI work with knowledge representations. In that case, obviously, we can only put in what we can formulate in an explicit way. Now, this is an incredible limitation because there was a, a philosopher called Michael Polanyi uh, who basically deliver, developed almost all what we know uh, in the 20th century about knowledge. And he made an incredibly important assertion and and provided substantial uh, evidence for that. And it was that, that uh, explicit knowledge cannot exist on its own. In human minds, any knowledge is either tacit or it is rooted in tacit, because any explicit knowledge has to be understood tacitly and applied tacitly. Now, this, is, this means that any explicit knowledge that we can put into computers will be incredibly partial and will lack something incredibly important. This is just the immediate knowing process. We can look at the processes of knowing in a slightly more extended way. For example, you can wonder at the beauty of a rainbow while you still know that it is just a prism effect, how the white light breaks into components and so on. And even if you know that, that knowledge will not prevent you from being able to wonder of the, of the beauty of the rainbow. We can tell jokes. Why? Because we are able to change 
uh, change uh, logical levels, so abstraction levels. And uh, the most important thing where actually anyone in the computer world agrees about that the common sense is something that we did not manage to manage to uh, work out at all. And this is actually the longest running AI project of the history. It is still running since 1986. They are trying to build a, a model of the common sense. And, and uh, so far, there is absolutely no useful outcome. So I, I wonder about the, the financing of this kind of uh, approach. Now, the next important thing is that even if we would do something about knowledge, knowledge does not work in a standalone way. So it is connected with many other of our our faculties. So it is connected to feelings such as be, feeling hunger or or being scared. It is also connected uh, to our emotions such as love or hate. And obviously, it is very important here to make this distinction between between feelings and emotions, because the same way as knowledge can override feelings, uh, it, the emotions can override knowledge, and we also uh, can adhere to certain values, meaning that we can, for example, transcend our self-interest for the interest of the, of the organization or the group or people or family or whatever else we hold uh, particularly important in, in our, our uh, selves. And this is, this is about knowing. So what we can say about knowing that there is some that we can replicate in computers, but it is a tiny bit of our knowledge. In that tiny bit, computers can deliver better performance, as we have seen that in in uh, chess and then Go, and more recently with protein folding and all sorts of other other uh, applications, where simply humanly it would be impossible to produce the number of combinations that would be uh, useful. Uh, the most recent one was, uh, for example, to use the minerals that can be found on Mars uh, to synthesize something that would be useful to produce oxygen or, or to uh, have any form of life. <coughs> this would have taken humans uh, hundreds of years to, to achieve. Now, the next is in terms of learning. So the learning that is used in uh, artificial neural networks is what we call reinforcement learning. What that means, it means that if I want to teach you something, uh, I just give you an input. If I like your uh, response to that uh, input, then I reward you. If I don't like it, I punish you. As you are learning, you will deliver always the, the uh, outcome that I am happy with. Now, this is an approach uh, in psychology from the, from the beginning of the last century. And I very often call it the, the dark ages of psychology, because it means that we had a discipline that studies the mind, while at the same time denies the existence of studying the mind, labeling it a black box, and reduces the study to the inputs and outputs. Now, obviously, this is a very useful thing and works very well uh, in terms of uh, AI and also in terms of, of humans. So if a child touches the hot stone, they will very quickly figure out that it is a bad idea and they will not do it again. However, uh, there are many other ways how humans learn. So first of all, we can be inspired and we can uh, like some teachers, for example, and therefore pursue their subjects or, or whatever they are delivering because we are curious about it, because we are interested about it, because we develop a passion for that learning process. We are also talented for some things and not talented for other things. Of course, one of the responses that, that an AI uh, person who believes in, in a thinking machine would deliver to that would be that, <laughs> of course, because AI is talented for everything, or it is not talented for anything. It is not about uh, whether it is talented for everything or anything. Uh, the point is that we do have these, these special features that we occasionally learn with a great ease in some fields, and it feels almost like play. And at the same time, 
we are we are uh, not learning that easily in some other areas and uh, most importantly i am a great advocate of the of the grandmaster apprentice relationships and i believe that these are incredibly useful especially because there now seems to be uh, substantial evidence that this is the only uh, way to achieve the grandmaster level of knowledge which is kind of the highest uh, level of knowledge and this deep level deep knowledge this this highest level of mastery is incredibly useful as we are developing our world you know you don't need a huge number of grandmasters but you need a few very much and based on this uh, what we need to figure out in our uh, learning organizations so in our organizations our banks as well where we uh, value knowledge is how to balance three things so we have these uh, grandmaster apprentice relationships which are working fantastically well and they are essential for the development of uh, high levels of mastery we have communities of practice where the peer learning uh, happens in collaborative ways through the phenomenon which I call uh, thinking together, and we have AI. Now, the point is that AI is a fantastic thing if we figure out how to use it well. The problem is that AI is an amplifier. It amplifies everything. If you are smart, it will amplify that. If you are stupid, it will amplify that as well. So the task of the learning organization today is to balance these three things, the communities of practice, the grandmaster apprentice relationships, and AI. Thank you. That's all what I wanted to share with you today. And there is a small message that I want to finish with. And it is that I hope that all the uh, viewers will enjoy the conference and what I am sure will be a fascinating discussion that follows now around the future of learning. Uh, before handing it over to Tanya Retter, uh, who is chairing today's panel and the pro proceedings, there will now be a short video on immersive learning provided by Edify. Thank you very much.